Hello and welcome. This presentation is about the Computer Information Systems major undergraduate programs at Baruch College. This information is accurate as of June 2022, and all of the links that you see in the presentation will be copied into the description section below this video. Who am I? I am Professor Richard Holizak. You can see my website here. Typically, I teach courses like database management systems, data warehousing, and big data, and occasionally fintech. So first off, where are we? We're within the City University of New York, which has about 275,000 students spread across seven community colleges and 11 senior colleges. Baruch is one of those senior colleges. We have about 19,000 students, and we are located right here in the heart of Manhattan on 25th Street. Within Baruch College, there are three schools. There's the Marx School of Public and International Affairs, the Weissman School of Arts and Sciences, and the Zicklin School of Business. Within the Zicklin School, there are some departments, including accountancy, economics and finance, information systems and statistics, law, management, marketing, and real estate. A student who comes to Baruch College takes a set of courses, what are called the pre-business core. They then get accepted into the Zicklin School of Business. And from there, students can take the courses in their major. The URL here, which I will put down in the description, gives you that set of steps to actually get into a major in the Zicklin School of Business. One of the biggest questions that comes up is exactly what is computer information systems? We like to think of computer information systems as the intersection of information technology and business. We can think of it as developing and using technology to address business and organization problems and opportunities. Some of the key roles at this intersection include jobs like the systems analyst, the data analyst, or the security analyst. However, our students go on to careers in many, many different job titles, including, as I mentioned, analysts, various types of engineering roles like a data or software engineer, types of management and administration, such as a database administrator or a systems administrator, as well as technical roles like a support technician, or a network technician, or even more business-oriented roles like an IT auditor. Another question that is frequently asked is, what is the difference between computer science and computer information systems? And again, I think of this similar intersection of business and computer science. For example, if you were taking an undergraduate degree in computer science, your coursework would focus on programming languages, data structures, compiler design, operating systems, computer architecture, and algorithms. And you'd also spend quite a bit of time taking things like discrete math and calculus. A business student takes courses in accounting, business law, economics, finance, management, marketing, and statistics. Our CIS majors take a collection of courses that bring business and computer science together, including programming languages, database management systems, systems analysis and design, IT project management, as well as more focused courses such as data mining, analytics, and cybersecurity. So, what does a Baruch student have to do in order to major in CIS? Well, as with all undergraduate students, you must take a liberal arts set of courses. These include your foreign language, English, reading and writing, a science course, some history courses, and so on. Then there's the set of the business core courses, which, as I just mentioned, accounting and finance and so on, all business students must take. Once those courses are finished, then the student can get into the business major. The specific name of the major 
for our department is called the Bachelors of Business Administration in Computer Information Systems. Our department also offers minors in data analytics, information systems, cybersecurity, fintech, and statistical analysis. We further support what's called a Tier 3 minor, which is a, technically a non-business minor in information technology and social responsibility. This presentation will mainly focus on the BBA in CIS. Our CIS major consists of eight courses. Five are required, three are electives. We offer three tracks to help guide students who may be interested in a particular area of study within CIS. The general track is the most flexible. The data analytics track is more focused towards careers in data analytics and data engineering. The cybersecurity track is mostly focused on cybersecurity. It's important to note that all of this is current as of spring 2022. You should check the links and the websites as over the years, these tracks and their contents and the courses will be updated. So first up, here's a look at the general track for CIS. The five required courses begin with CIS 2300, the programming and computational thinking. Then there's a choice of either object-oriented programming with C++ or with Java, or CIS 3120, which is the programming for analytics courses, which teaches Python. Next is the Database Management Systems course, followed by Systems Analysis and Design. The final course, which we call a capstone, which should be taken towards the end of the student's degree program, is called IT Development and Project Management. So these are the five required courses. The general track offers the widest range of electives. Pretty much any CIS, and including some uh, OPR courses, operations research courses, and statistics courses, are made available for the student to fill out those three electives. There's not enough time to talk individually about every course, but what I would generally point out is that some of the courses tend to be a little bit more technical in nature. For sure, the programming courses, things like data structures and algorithms, the big data technologies, web application development, maybe data warehousing, these tend to be more technical. And so a student who would like to uh, challenge themselves and complete more technical coursework, you have that flexibility on the general track. On the other hand, some of our electives are slightly less technical. For example, spreadsheet applications, e-business technologies, principles of web design, perhaps social media technologies and organizations, these tend to be a little bit less technical in nature and more business focused. So the general track really gives a student the ability to customize the degree to suit whatever their career goals or whatever their comfort level might be with technology. The data analytics track also has five required courses, again, beginning with programming and computational thinking, programming for analytics course, teaching Python, database management systems, and then data mining for business analytics and the capstone data warehousing for analytics. The list of electives is a little bit shorter, but it does feature courses like applied natural language processing, big data technologies, data visualizations, as well as some advanced statistics courses like regression and forecasting models and business statistics. The analytics track also permits a student to take a course in marketing, such as the marketing web analytics or the marketing analytics course. Our third track is the cybersecurity track. And again, the five required courses, programming and computational thinking, database management systems, computer networking, cybersecurity, and the capstone information technology audit. The list of electives for cybersecurity is a little bit, again, more focused. 
includes courses such as usability, privacy, and security, ethical hacking, as well as a choice of one of the law courses such as law on the internet, financial regulation, or compliance governance and whistleblowing. So in summary, the three tracks really do give the student the flexibility to focus their electives on a particular set of courses that will lead to careers that they are interested in. Now I'd like to show a typical example. Everyone who has sent their application into a college or purchased something from an online retailer or has used an app to find a date has interacted with this architecture that I'm showing on the slide. The architecture begins with a web browser or an app on a smartphone. That app is coded in hypertext markup language, cascading style sheets, it may incorporate images or video, it may include JavaScript to automate some features or improve the display in some way. Some of the common tools people would use to build this include things like Dreamweaver, Expression Studio, React, or AngularJS. Once the user interacts with the app or the web browser, data is sent via HTTP request over to a web server. That web server would use things like PHP or Active Server Pages or Node.js or Java Servlets to receive the request and perhaps format it into a query that is then sent over to a database server. That database server might include a relational database like Oracle or MySQL. It could also include a NoSQL database like Redis or MongoDB. Once that query is completed, a data response is sent back to the web server, and again, those programming languages go into action to format the reply as HTML and JavaScript and CSS so that the results can be displayed in the web browser or the app. So this little dance of these three levels, the web browser, the web server, and the database server, go on trillions of times a day at websites and retailers all around the world. How does our curriculum help support this? On the front end, the web browser and the app can be supported by a course like CIS 3630, Principles of Web Design, which will teach some HTML cascading style sheets, how to incorporate images and video, and some JavaScript work. CIS 4160, the Web Applications Development course, supports the middle tier, the web server, that might include PHP or other scripting languages, active server pages, Java servlets, node.js. CIS 3400 and CIS 4400 would support the back end. Students here could learn about relational database management systems, non-relational database management systems, and how to interact with them. So in this way, these four courses can help a student learn how these systems are built and can lead to a productive career in web application development. This is just one example of how a set of courses can be brought together to support this type of work. The last slide I want to present is a random assortment of tips for students who are just getting started with their education in CIS. The first I would suggest identifying a development environment. Now this can be a physical space or a virtual space where you plan to carry out your homework assignments and projects. It could include things like making sure you have a good laptop or a PC at home, or maybe a computer available at work, or perhaps identifying where on campus one of our many computer labs can be used. Also recommend obtaining necessary development software, such as Visual Studio, Anaconda Python, or Microsoft Access. By the way, all of the computer labs on campus have all of the necessary software already installed for you. If you have a Mac, use its software like VirtualBox or Parallels and load Windows 10 as a virtual machine. Some of the work that is done in some of the courses 
is just a little bit easier to do in Windows. As you may have noticed, many of the courses that we offer are supported by the Python programming language. For example, the programming for analytics, data visualization, data warehousing, and the big data course all rely on Python knowledge. There are many tutorials that are online that are free that can help you learn a little bit about Python. The more you can learn before you get into those courses or as you are working in those courses, uh, the better off you might be. Here are just two examples. You don't need to install anything. If you can visit these websites, you can get started and learn a little bit about the Python programming language. The fourth tip is to take advantage of the STAR Career Development Center. The STAR Center is staffed with professionals whose job it is to help you find a job. You could ask for help in setting up and reviewing your resume. They will work with you to do mock interviews. You can sign up for email alerts when CIS-related job postings come up. And you can start planning now to get an internship. One of the biggest determinants of landing a full-time job at graduation is having a strong internship. It is important to get this process started as early as possible, perhaps even in your freshman year. So don't put that off. It's a great resource that's available to any student for free, and I strongly encourage you to take advantage of those resources. My final tip is to join some type of a club. It could be a sports club, it could be a cultural club. For CIS majors, there is the student chapter of the Association for Information Systems, as well as the ISACA Cybersecurity Club. Both of these clubs offer weekly meetings. They bring in professionals from industry to talk about different careers. They offer various tutorials on programming languages or different technologies. And it's a great way to make friends and make connections. This is all very important. You've probably heard people talk about how networking is important. They're not talking about plugging in an ethernet cable. They're talking about the connections that you make with other students and alumni. And by joining a club, this is a great way of making those connections that will hopefully allow you to help each other as you progress in your career. Well, thanks for watching. Again, all of the links that I've shown in the prior slides will be available in the description section, and best of luck to you.